no doubt that is a very like a stunning opening track for a brand new band for a debut band. Uh, the the drumming alone is enough to basically demand your attention, <laughs> and of course the guitar riffs are are remarkable oh. as well. The, yeah. And then you've got that crazy rock and roll voice of Robert Plant in there. Um, the thing about it is that Led Zeppelin more or less came about it almost in in an organic manner. The fact is, I mean, okay, well, in, in late 1968, the English band the Yardbirds completely disbanded. <clears throat> At that time, Jimmy Page was the guitarist in the band. Before him, it started out with the guitar player. Eric Clapton was the main guitar player in the original Yardbirds. When he was gone, he was replaced by Jeff Beck. Now, Jeff Beck was now leaving, but he and Jimmy Page were friends ever since they were little kids. <laughs> so he said, why, doesn't, why don't you come in and you know, do this? Now, in the meantime, Jimmy Page was also a studio guitarist. Uh, he had a lot of experience with that, so it was kind of easy. Now, S- Jimmy Page now is more or less inheriting the Yardbirds. He inherited a lot of their catalog. He had inherited some of the material that uh, Jeff Beck had been working on, which explains why a lot of that found its way onto this album, sometimes in ways that Jeff Beck was very angry and insulted by, and it really uh, put a lot of distance between them and their friendship because Beck considered that material to be his. But when Jimmy Page took over the band, he was just running the Yardbirds. That was Yardbirds material, and he worked on it to keep going with it. So they both had a valid point. It wasn't like, I wouldn't say that it was like, it wasn't like Jimmy Page like outright stole it. It's more or less like he inherited it and then continued. Well, if he joined the band. Right. (laughs) And then he continued to use it. I mean, after the band broke up, Jimmy Page was the last man standing. He was the only remaining member. And he had the rights to the group's name. And he had contractual obligations to play a bunch of concerts at that point in time. So he had to do something. So he recruited John Paul Jones to play bass. He got Robert Plant to sing and drummer John Bonham. And uh, in late 1968, they toured Scandinavia and they called themselves the New Yardbirds. (laughs) And what they did is they performed a lot of the old Yardbirds material as well as like the song we just heard, Communication Breakdown, You Shook Me, Babe, I'm Going to Leave You, How Many More Times. A lot of stuff that was actually almost like hoary, like blue standard sentiments. Babe, I'm going to leave you. How many more times? You <laughs> shook me. You know, all of this stuff is like has been around for decades. Absolutely. Those, these themes, you know. Now, now, the month after they got back to England, uh, Paige changed the band's name to Led Zeppelin. And then the group entered the studio to record their debut album. And they recorded the whole thing in like 36 hours, which is stunning. Almost the entire album went down live. And then they put they they used overdubs, of course, Mm -hmm. on top of that. But most of the takes were live takes. Now, the name, I think, is rather funny. Um, The truth is that when they were talking about the name, they were hanging out with Keith Moon and John Entwistle Mm -hmm. of uh, The Who. And this was just around the time they were basically saying, well, why don't we form a band? And there was uh, Keith Moon who said, yeah, that would go over like a lead balloon. <laughs> and then Entwistle was sitting right there next to him. It's like, yeah, yeah, more like a lead Zeppelin. <laughs> Which, <laughs> and that was the aha moment for Jimmy Page, uh, thus the name. Anyway, um, as I said, a lot of the songs on this were somehow more or less either – subconsciously usurped deliberately but it really it's hard really to say whether or not at the time i remember thinking um when i was really beginning to investigate it that these guys were just out and out thieves trying to basically claim that they wrote all of these blues classics and not paying you know the proper due to the places where the song came from this next song is sort of an example of that this was credited to uh Jimmy Page and Robert Plant as songwriters. Initially. Initially. And uh, Page heard it, believe it or not, the first time he he heard this song on a Joan Baez record. (laughs) And he thought that it was like a traditional folk song. So he figured that he could take it. And since he was changing the arrangement of it, he was entitled to take songwriting credit. What he didn't know was that the song was written in the 1950s by a woman named Anne Breeden who basically um, put it to their attention, shall we say, (laughs) and now receives royalties for the song. 
It's called, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. <laughs> 